is. Well, hi everybody. Welcome to Showcase Your Beers with Pip. And today my special guest is Joy Reynolds, who is a fantastic, um, very experienced meditation teacher over 20 years. And she's joining me today to talk about her journey, her story, her business, and share some of her um, skills with us. So welcome to the show, Joy Reynolds. How are you? Great. Thanks, Pip. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. <laughs> pleasure. Pleasure. It's, um, it's always interesting to talk to somebody who has been on such a long journey with meditation or with whatever their um, special skill is. Uh, you do meditation in lots of different environments, but I think it's really interesting to hear people's stories of how they got to where they are. So maybe you could share with us how you got to to be teaching meditation after all this time. Yep, sure. Well, it goes back to over 20 years ago now, probably 23 or 24 years ago. And my introduction to meditation was through a, and, and often is for many people, through a time in my life where there was a bit of a crisis going on and you have those um, moments. And it was not only a crisis that was happening in my life. My, I had a marriage breakup. And then I, I was a single mum and and I was a, kind of an angry person that didn't really know who I was and, uh, you know, thought my life was over, all of those things. And then, then what happened was my daughter, who was going into secondary school, uh, was having some difficulties at school and she was being bullied at school and, and I was trying to help her deal with that. And then she was diagnosed with depression and anxiety as a result of that, maybe as a result of that, maybe not, maybe that would have happened anyway for her, but she was having some panic attacks and things like that. So I was, I was wanting to support her in the best mm. way I could without her going on to medication and those sorts of things. Yeah. So we tried a few different things, healings and uh, a few different kinesiology and a few other things. But a colleague of mine, I was working in corporate at the time, and a colleague of mine suggested meditation. And I'd never really, I didn't know anything about meditation. And mm -hmm. it was something that, uh, you know, I felt that wasn't something that I would want to be doing. Yeah. But I thought, look, I'll go along to a meditation centre for my daughter I'll go and check it all out for her because mm -hmm. I just didn't want to put a child in an environment full of hippies yeah. which, is, which is what I thought it was at the time yeah. that, that was my it was, perception it was an unknown entity for you wasn't it it was an unknown and it was you know a long time ago it was you know mm. that it's not as ma it's very mainstream now but it wasn't that many mm. years ago sure yeah, so I thought, well, I'll go along and check this out. Yeah. And uh, I went to a meditation centre. I was living in Melbourne at the time and, and walked into a meditation centre. And as I stepped in, I can still remember it now as if it was yesterday. Like mm -hmm. I can see myself walking in that door and it's, it's like I put my first foot into the door as the front door opened, mm -hmm. walked in, and there was this wave of, like peace and love this beautiful feeling as I walked in that door and it was like wow and it's like it just surrounded me mm. it was just beautiful and that was just the room where I take my shoes off <laughs> like, wow <laughs> and that's how powerful meditation is you know meditating in a room or a space yeah. that energy mm -hmm. is, is there yes in the groups Yes, and that energy stays there. Mm. So then I walked into the uh, room where the meditation was and there were a number of people there sitting down, different chairs. So I just sat myself down having no idea what to do and there was a teacher up the front. So I just sat in a, in a comfy chair and closed my eyes because that's what everyone else seemed to be doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I'll just sit here and close my eyes. <laughs> and it was just beautiful and I realised that this is actually what I'd been looking for my mm. whole life uh, without knowing. I, yeah. I just thought this is where I'm, this is, it's like I'd come home to something. Wow. I couldn't explain the feeling. Mm. The energy was just beautiful. I didn't know. I just closed my eyes and just I don't know, felt love and peace. Mm. Um, and it was just 
this most incredible feeling. I thought, wow, this is where I'm meant to be. This is what I'm meant to be doing. Mm. And I knew at that moment that this is something that I would need to practice. You know, I just had yeah. that knowing. Mm. And then as the meditation came to a close, the teacher spoke and there was a little bit of a class and, and I left that centre that day or that evening saying to myself, I'm going to go to India <laughs> I'm going to study meditate like my whole life in that yeah. moment wow. it was the beginning of a healing journey for me the beginning of you know an awakening it's like mm. I woke up at that mm. at that moment mm. so and that's what I did I came away and um uh you know, I did the meditation courses and lots of courses I attended the center regularly I was meditating daily and I introduced meditation to my daughter to both you my did. children Yes, yeah, and, yeah. and they actually went along and did a, one of their courses. Uh, they, they were probably a little bit young to understand, you know, a lot of the theory around it, mm -hmm. but it has benefited them in their lives and still does now to this day. They're adults now, but, um, yeah. you know, and it was that was the start of the journey and that just led on to so many things for me. I then I went to India, I did, mm -hmm studied meditation there and I attended many meditation retreats around the world I would travel yes. to, to go to retreats and um, did lots of different retreats and and then I started teaching it and I yeah. was teaching it in my uh, workplace yeah so I what inspired you to go to the teaching bit because obviously you did it for yourself initially yeah. and then I know for me I, I was doing my Reiki practice and my meditation and, and that healing stuff for me initially. And I never even thought of anybody else to begin with. And then there was something that shifted. At a certain point, I started to go, oh, maybe somebody else would like to, to learn this. Or maybe, you know, I could teach my friends this or, you know, and it's something shifted in my, my brain, my psyche, my heart that I didn't just want to keep it for myself. I wanted to share it with other people. Or did you know that it, from the very beginning? I mean, I know you went for your daughter, but was it a, um, a you know, the shift to teaching other people? What what yeah. happened to you there yeah. at that point? Yeah, well, it was just for me. I mean, mm -hmm. I need, and I had, ne I would never have thought that I would be teaching this. No, right. not for, not for a minute. I was no, just doing it for yes. myself, yeah. and yeah. and I, you know, I loved what it was doing for me, and I could see that it was helping relationships I was having, relationships mm -hmm. with my ex husband. All of that, all of those things happened. So many beautiful things happened, mm -hmm. and um, I got to a point. I think I might have been a little bit annoying to people because I. All of a sudden, I wanted everyone to experience what I was experiencing. <laughs> yeah. And so you, you put things, and I started doing things like I would introduce myself as, you know, introduce yourself, Joy, and I'd, I'd say, um, oh, I am a soul, and this body is called Joy. And people would go, oh, hi, Joy. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, oh, my goodness, <laughs> That's great. So that, you did that all the time to lots yes, of Yes, I, I started doing that a lot. And I think someone said to me, oh, not sure in a corporate not setting. Not in every, yeah. If you should do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. I love it. Yes, and it's, yes. it's true. And I absolutely get that. But I know that there are some people who would go, <laughs> ooh, she's a little bit And, and um, this is over 20 years ago, remember? <laughs> But I love it. I love that because that totally resonates with me. And I know that, you know, if you introduced yourself to me and said that, I'd go, that's awesome. Let's talk more <laughs> about that. But the I know that there, you know, the normal, the muggles, the muggles <laughs> of the world would go, okay, that person I don't, <laughs> I don't get her. I do not get her at all. Um, but there, were there some people who were curious about why you were saying that and then it sort of led into... You know, yes. So, so what, what happened was I was working in corporate at the time and I was, I was doing some mentoring as well. I was an executive assistant to a CEO, but I was, I was the mentor. I was the senior um, mm -hmm. EA. So I would mentor all the other PAs in right. the organization. And I was doing that prior to um, uh, going to meditation and learning about meditation. Mm -hmm. And because it was just part of my role to do that. And then afterwards I I was mentoring them and I 
I found, and, and this happens in meditation, you know, once, once you open yourself up to your own personal development, you become more aware of conversations that you're having and conversations mm -hmm. that other people are having and whether you're having above the line or below the line or, right. you know, those sorts of conversations. Mm. And it was apparent to me that these mentoring sessions weren't all that effective and productive and they were essentially whinge sessions. Right about you know i'm not happy doing this or my boss this or mm -hmm. and and I, I didn't really recognize it prior to being introduced to meditation and right. you know, having this beautiful awakening myself and and i thought oh i don't enjoy these you know i just don't want to have these conversations it was you know really low energy type conversations mm. Yeah. So then, you know, I thought about how can these be better? Um, yeah. Then I, I looked up coaching and I thought maybe if I could do a coaching course of some sort to, to do these. And I spoke to my boss who was very open. He was amazing. And I put it to him and he said, yes. And he said, yes, go and do the course. So yeah. I, went, I went and did a coaching course. Mm -hmm. I became a certified coach. And then what happened was I started coaching these um at these PAs yeah and uh you know a bit more structure around them completely different conversations mm. and you know a bit that it came about some goal setting and some you know looking within themselves and personal development and all of those sorts of things relationships like how are you speaking yeah. to other people yeah great yeah and it was you know asking the right questions yes I was about to say yeah. yes rather than just having getting caught up in their conversation which was spiraling down right. <laughs> actually yeah. asking the right questions for them mm -hmm. to go within and you know bring that all up to the surface and right. and that was really powerful and then I introduced meditation into those sessions because it oh, I actually introduced it as a visualization mm. because the, the word meditation 20 years ago people were a bit funny about so mm. um, so it would be a visualization visualizing themselves you know mm. doing what they wanted to to do yes. achieve rather than yeah what what was happening now and yeah. and and I actually asked my boss if I could introduce uh, meditation into the workplace and we had a little room in this it was a very large um, corp, corporate business very large in Melbourne and we had a little room there that was not really used for anything and I asked if I could turn that into a quiet room rather than yeah. a meditation room okay great yeah <laughs> you've got to work within the space that you're in right. <laughs> so I did that and um, I set that all up and it was just beautiful and mm. I would uh, run little meditation sessions in there as well as have mm. we had music and people could just go in there and listen to beautiful quiet music with beautiful lighting mm. but I would also um, do some meditation sessions in there just talk or do some meditations take right. guide them through meditations and that's how it all started that's when yeah. I realized wow this <laughs> can benefit so many other people mm. um, and then I started doing little meditation workshops outside of um, the office as well you know just yeah. local evening meditation workshops and nice. and I continued that moved around moved up north to Queensland and did them there and then I was uh, facilitating meditations on retreats yeah. uh, with uh, people that were running retreats I would facilitate the meditation component and right yeah so it just evolved from that and every workplace yeah. I went to after that and I went to a few after that I always introduced a meditation program fantastic yeah. so you're not working in the corporate environment anymore yeah. No, I, um, I'm not working there anymore. I finished, we were up north in Queensland. We've moved back here. Yeah. But um, I'm actually still uh, mentoring uh, some of the people in that corporate business. Oh, I, still cool. work with them. I do some consulting, mentoring and um, yeah. Yeah, with, with people. I still do a bit of that. But um, no, I've gone with my, this is my heart work and yeah. this is my soul work and yeah. And, and I've yeah I, I I've, I've just decided to to yeah just work with meditations. I've I had a hypnotherapy practice for a while because I've done lots of things. I'm an NLP <laughs> practitioner, hypnotherapist, you know, yeah. EFT, all of those, and coaching. I had my own practice for a while, um, but meditation is where it is for me. That's yeah. I just yeah, I know in my mm. soul that's mm. my soul work. 
Yeah. And you've, the, so it's so interesting, isn't it? How we, you know, we have multiple skills and we, we do all these different things, but there's one thing that we usually end up being drawn back to. And this is the thing for you that sort of you get, you've been drawn back to, which is lovely. Um, and the fact that you kept introducing it in all the different environments that you were in, that was a, a big giveaway, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, absolutely. that's and amazing. I, and I, kind of pushed it aside a bit, I think, about, mm. you know, recognising that that's really what I should be doing. Mm. And I, I knew, but I just thought, no, no, I need to be doing a bit of co my corporate work and just introduce these things. But, you know, once I made the decision, and it was the pandemic that did it for me, really. Yeah. Yeah. COVID. Yeah. yeah. But, yes. So interesting that that is happening for a lot of people that I'm talking to. They're saying that, you know, what they were doing before was sort of what they wanted to do or half what they wanted to do or maybe they weren't doing what they wanted to do and this has actually made them go, well, if I can't do what I was doing, I might as well choose something else, you know, and they've been able to actually move in the direction of their heart, which is fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, I love that. That's great. So what you've created during this time, so 2020 has been a time for you to create a new platform I guess so that you yeah. can actually put the do the meditations and put them out there so do you want to share with everyone about the club yes sure well this all started at the at the beginning of the pandemic back in March mm. I started doing just morning live meditations just on my Facebook group or we, I was doing it twice a day mm -hmm. and I did uh, over 200 lives wow because I meditate anyway, so I would yeah. get on live and, and share it. And then I had lots and lots of people uh, coming to listen to those lives and had a group that they were coming to. And that resulted in, in a, an introduction of a club, a meditation club, the 123 Meditation Club. Mm -hmm. So you join that club and, and you get uh, a daily meditation. Every day there's a meditation and I have masterclasses. I've just did a masterclass last week on um, awakening your soul purpose, in fact. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah, that, that evolved out of that. And I, have, and I started a YouTube channel, so I record, um, write and record meditations and there's beautiful meditations on there, all different types of meditations on my YouTube channel as well. So that supports that as well. Yeah. So, and that's how I really discovered that this is what, this is my heart, this is my soul work, just yeah. doing, I just knew that that's what I'm meant to be doing, yeah. sharing that wisdom and, um, yeah, sharing the, what I have to. Um, yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. That's great. And is there something that's sort of been coming up for most people that, you know, have you done a certain topic a, a number of different times? I mean, or is that it, do you find that you're creating new things every time? Yeah, on my YouTube channel, I create lots of different, there's lots of topics and lots of times, there's five minute, 10 mm. minute, 15 yeah. minute, there's silence, there's lots of different um, meditations for different um, different subjects, different topics. Yeah, Meditation essentially, what I have found with the majority of people that I have worked with um, and taught meditation with and um, shared meditations with is it's it's always about just releasing stress and anxiety that mm. you know whatever it is that's going on yeah. is creating stress in the in the yeah. body in the mind mm. on the day on the daily meditations um, I often have themes so we've you know we'll do the chakras so we'll, we'll do a week and do all the chakras or um, I have one day um, we go from sound to silence mm. and different ones this week for example I've just um it's it's the light it's just what comes to me i feel mm -hmm. that uh, people need and yeah. we're doing meditations on the inner light or you know protective light those sorts of things and yeah you know, just kind of download things <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's great yeah. yeah i mean you have the skills now to do you find that when you first started you were very um structured and you sort of did things in exactly mm -hmm. how your teacher taught you yes, and yes it was very structured and then you started to branch out and become more flexible and do that more intuitive sort of download thing and it was better? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. When I first started, I would just um, read a script essentially. Mm. Um, uh, I mean, I write them now. I write the scripts to record, but I would just read that and, and 
but just with the experience mm. and working with others, I find that if I'm more intuitive and I, I actually go into the meditation myself, yeah, uh, it all just downloads. I don't, you know, I can go now. I used to be frightened to do a meditation and not know exactly what that meditation was going to be. Yep. But I can go into one now and just allow whatever comes because I think whatever comes is what's needed at the time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do have, you know, there's definitely structure around around the sequence of the meditation because with meditations there, you know, there mm. are the, this coming in and coming out and there's sequences right. that um, the rest just kind of flows in. Mm. Yes, and uh, that's really interesting because it's a similar situation when I do my Reiki tech courses and when I do my Reiki sessions, I find the same thing happen that when I first started, I was very structured about the way that I did things. And then it's become more pip reiki, you know. <laughs> it's yeah. the way that the way that the energy flows through me and the way that the energy works is how I teach it and how I do my sessions. And it when I let it do what it's supposed to do, when I let the flow happen, it's way more powerful than when I when the little pip, you know, what like you were saying, the the, the, you know, the joy, the soul knows to let it flow, but the little the little ego wants to control it and go, it needs to be like this and I need to heal this person and, and, and fix them in some way. And I find that really interesting, that shift that happens at, at a certain point, and it's different for everyone, that we go through this process of going, wait a minute, this is not me. This is... Yeah. It's not my, it's not me, for me, my job to fix this, this person. Do you, how do you sort of, um, have you reconciled that? Well, that's, that's a really interesting question because I, I struggled with this when I first started um, hypnotherapy because I, I, um, I'm a hypnothe hypnotherapist. Yep. People would come to me expecting me to fix them. Yeah. And all through, you know, your coach training and, and the hypnotherapy training when I was doing that, that you, you taught that, that you don't actually fix them. You, you're actually, you're just there to help them to find what they have within yeah. to improve whatever it is they want to improve. I, I'm, I'm just a, a guide. I, I'm just that guide. And uh, with hypnotherapy in particular, you know, we've all, and you'll understand this, we all have within us, what or everything that we need yeah you know to perform at our best or be the best or be the person or fix ourselves yeah we can heal ourselves with our thoughts and our feelings and 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 you know just focusing within mm. someone else you can't you know it's about people a lot of people wouldn't take responsibility and that's that was really difficult for me so I would feel pressure mm they would come in saying yes you're going to fix me you're going to stop me smoking or you're going to stop yeah. me doing these things or you're going to fix yeah. this yeah and no I can't that's not my role here to fix no. you're not they're not broken for a start <laughs> right I was about to say need fixing <laughs> yes exactly it's more of a I found I remember when I was listening to Robert Holden um Yep. once and he said that you know that concept of you're not actually broken there's nothing wrong with you essentially there's nothing wrong with you mm -hmm. it's about remembering that there's nothing wrong with you and letting go of all of those you know misconceptions and beliefs that we have that are blocking us from remembering that there's nothing wrong with us and that's actually what makes us have that dis-ease in our lives right and that's what yeah. the soul's role is to help yes. you remember Right, right, yeah. And that's where meditation is beautiful I, because it taps you into that soul connection, yeah. which I think a lot of people don't really get that. They go, oh, we're just breathing or, you know, th there's sort of this misconception around meditation being, you know, you're chanting or you're singing or you're, you know, whatever it is that you choose to do, you're, however you meditate. And when I realised that it was everything, yeah. all of those things or none of those things to get you to the place where you're just not your ego anymore you're just your soul that's the bit that's the aha that we have that's the, most, that's the most difficult part for people to because to drop your ego to let go of that is really difficult it can be difficult because right. it's a fight against that 
Yeah. yeah, well, we we that's who we think we are, yes. you know. And if you if you're dropping away or letting go or surrendering who you think you are, that's huge. That means your identity, your you know your your identity is in question. So, yeah, of course, that's that's one of the big things about med. That's why we practice it, you know, on a regular basis. Yes, and the thing with meditation, it's very subtle. It's not. It's not like um, if you think about the gym, for example. You go mm. to the gym and you do one workout. You don't come back having you know big muscles, and you've got to continue doing the yeah. workout for your body, for the external mm. body to improve. And people will go to the gym. And, you know, they'll go along and do all of this work on the external. But meditation is actually gym for the mind. Mm. Unless, unless you've got what's going on, you know, in your mind up here um, working for you, whatever you do on the external, and you've got to go within to the heart in the meditation, but you're not, you're not going to, you know, fix, I guess, yeah. what it is you're trying to do. But often the gym and exercise is distraction mm. so that you don't have to it takes you away from the stress for that certain amount of time um but when you come back from it you you have to face that stress and you have to face anxiety all of those things what meditation does if you have a daily or a regular practice very subtle and it does release that it naturally releases and heals the stress mm. yeah and people often don't notice the benefits of it until somebody else notices the benefits of it. Yeah, and someone says, what have you been doing? You're different than you used to be. Yep. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's very subtle and it's just mm. the practice of it. Um, it, it. It helps with all areas of your life. If you're meditating daily, you'll have the motivation to go to keep going to the gym. You'll, you'll be inspired to do the things that you want to do just the, it's it's so incredibly powerful and even mm. uh, recently there was a harvard study recently this year about um meditation and a, a regular meditate daily meditation practice can increase your immunity by 36 percent. so it's incredibly healing yeah and that, that's been my experience when i started you know it, it was not only a healing journey for my soul for me <clears throat> but physically as well mm. you know it, and you talked about the disease in the body, and that's what stress is. It's yeah, yeah, so it yeah. It, all of that, and it gives you the clarity to allow you to to see and have an awareness of when you may be getting stressed. A clarity mm. that is, you know, well, this is what I need to do. And the breath is that you know, the best thing you can do is breathe. breathe. Remember, <laughs> we are breathing. We, we yeah. Don't, really breathe you know if you have an yeah. awareness it's coming back to that present moment and that's mm. that's what it does it's not about not thinking because if you think about not thinking <laughs> then you're thinking, thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know it's that's I think that's another misconception that a lot of people have is that when you do meditation you're going to not think at all and I always say to people that you know even the monks on the mountain have thoughts they think, oh, I'm hungry or, I, you know, I want to go to the toilet or, you know, oh, that's a nice sunset or whatever it is. They still think they're just better at letting it go. Once they've had the thought, then they let it go. And then they yep. have another thought and then they let it go. So I, I, in each thought. Yeah, it's something that um, a lot of people have a misconception about when they start doing meditation. So one of the things that you offer um, for people who get in touch with you is you have a, a free meditation download that's on your website that people can access to sort of listen to and and try you out <laughs> yeah but on yeah, on the website there's lots of um, meditations there you can purchase or there is a download there and I recently did an 11 11 yes. uh, challenge uh, you can download those 11 meditations 11 minute meditations yeah and the other thing is there's a meditation for beginners ebook which has right. a lot of information about meditation that's a free download as well you can awesome go and so they can go to the um to, is that the the one two three no that's website? the uh, yeah meditation for the soul oh, meditation for the soul. yep 
Yeah, they can go on there. The meditation club is 123meditationclub.com. Cool. Great. And they can come in through the Facebook page as well. Yes, yes. The Facebook group is Meditation for the Soul. So just come in and join that Facebook group. And um, there's a whole lot of information in there. And then that that can take you into the the club as well. Fantastic. And that's great. So people can join you and sort of get to know you first and then they can join the club or they can, you know, um, purchase the meditations as well if they have a particular one that they're really drawn to. So that's That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah and I, I love that. I do actually do personalized meditations. If I've got some, I do some work for um, somebody in the UK who uh, does some work with them around money issues, mm-hmm. and uh, they have a money mantra that okay. they need to read every day. And I actually record that as a meditation for them. So oh, you know, awesome. there are yeah, I can do those personalized things as well fantastic that's great so yeah so that people can get in touch with you obviously through the website or the facebook page um and that's really cool so meditation for the soul um is where you need to go folks to get in touch with joy and you also kevin is involved in that as well yes yes he does all of the behind the scenes stuff for me (laughs) And he does some of the meditations as well. Yeah, so that's your new partner, um, yeah. fabulous um, man. So you might see him on the page as well, folks. If you go to the Facebook page, you know, this is not Joy, that that's yeah. because it's Kevin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been teaching meditation together for many years. Yeah, yeah, that's lovely. It's nice that you have someone that you can, you know, share yeah. this with, this journey with. So, thank you yeah. so much for joining me on Showcase Your Biz. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. No worries. And uh, we will uh, see you again soon, I'm sure. So thanks, thanks everybody. If you um, would like to have your business um, showcased on uh, Spiritual Events Directory, just uh, give me a buzz at Pip Coleman um, Author Coach. That's my Facebook page. Or you can come through uh, email at pipcoleman at yahoo.com.au. Thank you so much again and uh, we'll see you next time on Showcase Your Biz.